Hey everyone, and welcome back to another of my tutorials, this time on creating a panorama for the Astronomical Observatory. There may be cases when, because of the landscape around your observatory, trees, houses, fences, mountains, you don't have a full horizon visibility. And because of this, you need to know at specific times and dates if an object will be visible or not. Maybe it's hidden by the tree to the southwest or the house to the north. So to do this, you want to use a software like Stellarium with a custom-built panorama for your observatory site. And I will show you how to do this next. You will need several tools like a camera. It can be a smartphone camera. They take panorama images. In this case, it's easier. But if they cannot do a 360 panorama, just a partial one, like in my case, you need to stitch the images together. You will need a clinometer and a compass. Sun too, for instance, comes with both to take the measurement of the highest object on your horizon and the azimuth bearing for that object, which should be true azimuth. Most compasses use magnetic bearing. Some software compasses make adjustments automatically, but if not, I post you the link to the magnetic declination site uh, where you can check what's the one for your location and add or subtract it from your own compass reading. Then you obviously need a panorama stitcher software like Hugin or Microsoft ICE. Hugin is nice and free, still available. ICE is not, but ICE works out of the box without any custom settings. Hugging is also easy once you get the hang of the settings and uh, this can take some time. And in this case, I will post the link to ICE that's still available on webarchive.org and uh, I will use that for this tutorial. Another step is required before we actually load the panorama in Stellarium, and that is to remove the sky background. So any clouds, sun, blue sky needs to go away because we will replace that with the stars and the Stellarium rendered sky, nighttime or daytime. And that requires uh, to have a nice transparent sky in our panorama. I have already uploaded here um, several images and prepared the tools for you so that it goes nice and smooth. First, we need to create the panorama from a list of images. I've taken here a set of images. You can see them and import them in ICE and um, they need to overlap. This is important because the software will search for common points between images when stitching. Stitching uh, is automatic. I usually leave all defaults uh, and let it decide for itself what's the best course of action. First, it aligns the images by finding um, common points between them. So this is why we need to overlap them. Even in my case, I have a phone which takes a 180 degree panorama, I need to take three panoramas overlapping. If I just take two, two of them, 180 plus 180, it's 360, but they won't overlap. Once alignment is complete, the ICE software will compose um, the final panorama that we can explore to check if it's correct. If we find that something is not right, the horizon has to be perfect. If it's not perfectly aligned, we need to redo it. We need to go back to importing, removing images, adding images, taking new snapshots. Um, otherwise, objects which are not on the horizon, well, they can be imperfect. And I'll show you 
what's happening with our panorama. So uh, this is the stitched panorama. As you can see, the horizon looks nice. There are some problems, uh, for instance, here and also um, here as well. But the horizon profile looks nice. So um, the next step is to crop it. And the crop can be automatic or manual. Um, if it's automatic, you need to remember that you need to leave the highest object in the image and what i suggest is to crop the image uh, where the highest object ends uh, the lower part as well should be cropped somewhere um, so that we don't get any uh, of these kind of artifacts it should be nice and smooth all the way up here for instance and uh, this highest object is the object that we will measure for altitude and azimuth with the clinometer and compass. And we'll also need the uh, altitude for the lowest part of the image. We can do this with the clinometer. We'll use these to um, stretch the panorama. Stellarium does this for us automatically. Uh, it uses the top height and the low height in degrees from the flat horizon to stretch the panorama vertically. And it will automatically stitch the uh, right side with the left side of the image. Nice 360 image. Once we do this, we export the image in a format. We can use uh, PNG and it will be exported. Um, pay attention here uh, when you export it, Stellarium accepts images with dimensions power of the number two. So it, you can have an image, let's say, of uh, 1024 by uh, 512 pixels. You won't be able to have an image uh, with a size of 1,000 by five, uh, 500. The reason is uh, the way uh, the rendering engine underneath works, or uh, that's what the authors in the manual say. Once we have this and we export it, we can load it in GIMP. Uh, this is a free software processing tool. It's easy to use, and we can start removing the blue sky and clouds and also the um, sun here. So to do that, we first need to add uh, a alpha channel. Once we added the alpha channel, we can go here to the fuzzy select tool and select regions, click select regions of the sky and remove them. Um, the important bit about the fuzzy select tool is that it has a threshold. The larger the threshold, the more the selection will be because uh, it will include more colors. The smaller the threshold, the less color variations will be included in the selection. So you can see here uh, with this large threshold, it selected a lot of things. And we don't want this, we we'll need a smaller threshold. You just need to play around with your own image and select the best values. You can zoom in and double check that you are removing what you need. Let's say we remove a bit from these trees as well. The threshold is still too much. So uh, you see, you can do this, remove some bits from between the trees so that we can see in Stellarium then how stars appear and disappear behind the tree branches here. So uh, once you do this and you're happy with the result, um, you need to fine tune and remove the last bits which were not removed by the fuzzy select tool. You can do this with the eraser here uh, for all the uh, bits which, which are left and then uh, you can export it uh, as a panorama. 
uh, you can save it uh, as a PNG or a JPEG. In my case, I will export it as a PNG at the end, and uh, we'll get something which looks like this. See, it's a nice panorama, black, transparent actually. Uh, background is here, we'll see the stars and sun and moon rendered by the Stellarium. And we'll see them disappear behind the trees, reappearing on the other side. So it will give us a nice realistic approximation of the night sky around our observatory. And uh, this is done quite easily. You do this by creating in the landscapes folder in Stellaria, which is usually in program files, uh, a folder for your own observatory. And you create, you copy the panorama that you've uh, saved in GIMP, and then you create an ini file, so landscape.ini, that should be the name. And that file contains a few sections. This is a simplistic one. The manual, the postal link, um, contains everything. And you can define the uh, landscape, so some details, uh, spherical projection. This is what we create when we do a 360 panorama from images. This is the panorama image. This is this file name here. And these are the heights that we got from the clinometer, which can be either from the software. Some phones allow you to take measurements, inclinations of objects. Uh, and compass bearings. So this is the 36, the height of the highest tree in my image, 36 degrees up on the horizon. And this is the lower part of the image, minus 12 degrees uh, under the zero horizon. Now you remember that I said that for, um, for the panorama that we are creating, we also need to take the azimuth bearing, the true one, not the magnetic one. So we need to adjust. If we use a compass, uh, magnetic compass, we need to adjust it for the magnetic declination. Some software tools do this for us automatically. And this, basically, uh, we use this to adjust the direction, the orientation of this panorama. You rotate it left and right till the direction of this tree here, of this top here, matches the Stellarium's orientation with our own reading. So in this way, we obtain a geographically aligned image. This is not that reading. This is just uh, by how much we rotate it left and right to get to that reading. So you need to go to Stellarium, see how, where it's rendered, decide whether you need to rotate it left or right by a certain amount of degrees, and uh, then come back here in this file and change this, re-upload the panorama in Stellarium, and uh, Try it again till you get a accurate orientation. In my case, it was 120 degrees uh, rotation. Uh, then, after you define the landscape, you go to the location. This is the um, location of the site. So you can see this is the location on the portal scale. It's a four um, on the light pollution map. And this is these are the approximate. Uh, geographical coordinates, the altitude, and the time zone used uh, so that Stellarium can display these accurately when you load the panorama. So um, when you load the panorama in, in Stellarium, it will show you this panorama with the sky rendered in Stellarium. So this makes it quite awesome in this case, because we'll be able to see the sky as it is uh, in reality, simulated in Stellarium. So we can plan accordingly. So let us see how, how it looks in Stellarium. So 
This is the Stellarium sky with the panorama. You can see uh, we've got the trees, we've got some, some gaps in the trees here. We can see the sky behind the branches and uh, we can see through the trees here. Uh, all very nice and neat. And zoom in for a better view. And um, let us try to change the time so that you can see. You can see here nighttime. You can see Milky Way disappearing behind this this large tree to the south. And then uh, we can see other objects uh, disappear. We can see when they disappear, uh, when they'll reappear. We can plan accordingly uh, our observation night. So uh, that's how you get a panorama into Stellarium or your observatory. So don't forget to like, subscribe, and uh, see you next time.